everybody. Let's give this problem a try. So we have this frame and there's a pin support over here at C. There's a rope. So there's tension over here at B and then there's a load here at G. So what's the strategy here? When you have a frame, you just break it apart, right? So we have three members of the frame. There's this one over here. And then the vertical one. And then that kind of L-shaped one. Okay, and then there's point B, E, F, and G. And then over here, this is E. And then there's D, C, there's D over here, F over here. Okay, so this has kind of four points. There are forces acting at four different points. There are forces acting at three different points. This one has forces acting at two different points, which makes this a two force member, right? Because whatever is happening here at point F, let's say the forces are like this, over here, they have to be equal and opposite. Has to be, right? This force has to be equal and opposite this. Otherwise, the entire part will accelerate vertically, right? This force has to be equal and opposite to this one. Otherwise, the part will accelerate horizontally, which means they have to be, the forces, they have to be equal and opposite acting along this line. So it's either like this or like this. Those are the only two possibilities. All right, so let so this is point D. I'll just call this D and I'll call this D. Okay, which means, right, there's point D over here. This has got to be equal and opposite to this by Newton's third law. So D. And then C right here. This. That's here, which is here. So the force here has to be equal and opposite this one. Right, because that's the same pin right there. D. Okay, and then, oh, what is this angle right here? I'll just call it theta. That's got to be arc tangent. Opposite over adjacent. So what is this? This is uh, 800 minus 200. So 600. And then over here is 800. So, so we know this angle right here. This angle right here. We know it right here. Okay. And what else do we have? Uh, let's just go oh, here. That load. Actually, we know it, right? It's 100 kilograms, so mg, so 981 newtons. Okay, and then there's tension in this rope here. And we know this angle. I'll just call it phi, right here. That's got to be arctangent of opposite over adjacent, so 800 over 400. Okay, so we know that angle as well. And what else do we have? There is a pin here at E. So here, I'll just decompose it into, if I pick coordinates like this, I'll decompose the reaction at E into X and Y components. There, and then see this pin here? That's here and here, right? So whatever, I, whichever way I drew it here, it's got to be equal and opposite here, right? Okay, what am I missing over oh, right here? C right here. So I'm going to decompose this into X and Y components. Oh, C, right? And there we go. You got everything, I think, right? Okay, so that's the strategy, right? Break it apart. So I broke it into these three. Let me move them around. Okay, so space them out a little bit. All right, 
right, so we got the three members of the frame. Okay, so for this one, we can write three equations, some forces in X, some forces in Y, some torque about some are clever. Here, we can write three equations. And then how many unknowns are there? T, E, X, E, Y, D, C, X, C, Y. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six unknowns. We can write six equations, which means we can solve for everything. Okay, so, but something that's practical. You don't have to do this, but you could, if you want, draw the free body diagram of the entire frame. So see how there's this bar and then this bar and this bar. So say this is the free body diagram of the entire frame, the whole frame. And then there's a force acting here there's a tension here, and then there's a pin over here at C. Okay, and then again, we know the angle over here. Okay, so again, you don't have to do this because already, right, we have three equations here, three equations here, so we have enough equations for the number of knowns, unknowns, but I think this step arguably makes it simpler because let's say we write three equations. Let's give it a try. So x direction, there's this minus t cosine phi plus cx equals zero. Y direction, minus t sine phi cy minus the load over here. Okay, and then let's sum torque about somewhere clever. If I sum torque about here, there will be torque due to CX and CY and this. So there will be two unknowns. If I sum torque about here, then there will be torque due to this and this and this. There will be three unknowns. If I sum torque about here, then there's torque from this and this. So there would only be one unknown. So all three choices are valid. Any choice is valid, but I think that would be clever if I sum torque about over here. All right, so torque about here. Uh, let's see, the lever arm from here to here is 1.2 meters. So 1.2 meters times 981, and that would create a torque clockwise, which is actually in the This way would be Z out of the page. So that would be the torque from this would actually be in the negative Z direction. So negative. And then let's say if you split T into components like this, then the horizontal component would be cosine because it would be adjacent to the angle. And this one would be opposite the angle. Okay, so if I split it up like this, maybe it's easier to visualize. Then there's going to be torque from this force, that component, the lever arm is right here, which is 8, 0.8 meters. So 0.8 meters times T cosine phi, and that will cause a torque in the positive Z direction. And then the torque from this, the lever arm is here, which is 0.4 meters. And T sine phi, that causes torque this way, positive Z direction. And then that's it. All right, so there are the three 
But look, there's, let me highlight the unknowns. That's unknown. Right, so look, this equation only has one unknown, t. So solve this one for t. Plug it in here, you get cx. Plug it in here, you get cy. So right now, we know all three unknowns. Right, we know t and cx and cy. So we know t, cx, and cy. We know these values already. So now, if we go here, that's some forces in x, uh, we're doing this free body diagram. Negative t cosine phi minus cx minus d cosine theta. Okay, and then y direction, t sine phi minus ey minus d sine theta minus 981. Okay, again, we already know t. So the only unknowns here and here. Okay, so let me come back here in a second. Let's move on here in the x direction. ex d sine theta, oh, sorry, cosine theta cx in the y direction ey plus d sine theta plus cy. Okay, now we already know cx and cy and t. The unknowns here. Okay, so let's be clever about which point we sum torque. So if we sum torque about here, then there's torque from EX and, and CX, but then we already know CX, so there's gonna be one unknown. If we sum torque about here, then there will be torque from D and CX. So either, but if we sum torque about here, there'll be torque from D and EX. So the cleverest choice would either be here or here. Um, how about I'll sum torque about E over here. Okay, so the torque about here would be here to here, which is 600 millimeters, 0.6 meters times D cosine theta, because only this component provides torque. And then um, from here to here was 800, so 0.8 times CX, and that's it. Again, we already know CX. We already know this. So th look, there's only one unknown, D. So solve... Solve this equation for D, All right? So solve for D, got it. Plug it in here, then you got EX. Plug it in here, you got EY. And then, right? So we already know D and EX and EY. So we already know this and this and this. So the only unknown left, T. And then we already knew CX, CY, and, oh no, we already knew T, so we would, we'd be done actually, right here, done. We got everything, all the reactions, everywhere, okay? So keep in mind the method, it's the method that's important, okay? So keep on practicing, see you on the next video.